GoCollect just released an FMV algorithm update. That's the fair market value pricing tool that they have on their website. So in this video, we're going to discuss, does it still suck? Because it did suck in the past. You're definitely going to want to stick around for this one and stick with me to the end. We have our key takeaways. But before we get into it, this is a very exciting time here at Bryce Comics. The Wilbur Collection, the first wave of books have already launched. Most of them have already sold. If you haven't seen that video that we just posted last, definitely go check it out. It's one for the ages, massive collection. We have about 1,100 slabs from that collection that should be here any minute, actually, by the time you're watching this. So by the time you're watching this, they should already be listed on the website, at least some of them. And then in the coming weeks and months, we're going to have, you know, eventually all of them will be released. So make sure you're signed up to that newsletter over at BryceComics.com. In so doing, you're entered to win a Hulk 349.0 newsstand, 200 dollar book last time i checked the fmv but that thing's not stagnant as we'll see here in this video some other really exciting announcements we have two massive shows coming up on whatnot friday if you're watching this the day it comes out at 5 p.m mountain time we're doing the first wilbur collection slab show over on my whatnot there's a link down in the description for 15 dollars where you can come by and pick up a free book if you're new to whatnot we're gonna have a chance at a thousand dollar store credit we're gonna have giveaways every five minutes we're gonna have vintage Marvel comic books at $1 starts and we're going to auction off some grails starting at $1. I still need to pick which grails uh, we're going to auction off starting at $1. So make sure you bookmark that show. I'll have a preview video so you can see and you can set timers or you can come and only show up for the books that you're interested in. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be a ton of fun. I hope to see you there. And then the following Friday, we're doing a special San Diego Comic-Con themed show. It's going to be a Comic-Con from home. We're going to be here doing the show and that's going to be another show with tons of slabs starting at a dollar tons of giveaways it's going to be amazing so please go bookmark both those shows and let's hop into the computer all right so i want to start by reading just a few points out of this blog post announcement from go collect that they dropped last week that go collect announces major fmv upgrade i'm not going to read the whole thing but there are some really important points here like this one in particular what exactly is FMV and why is it important? In a nutshell, fair market value is you not overpaying and never underselling. Fair market value exists to provide you with an equal and stable ground level approach to collecting and investment. Fair market value means you pay what you should be paying at that moment in time. This is very important is that it's at that moment in time because prices are always fluctuating, which they go on to say. With that said, we all know by now that an organic FMV is never stagnant, nor does it rarely sleep. The vast array of collectible marketplaces are ripe at any given moment with a disparate surplus of items in a variety of prices and conditions. Somewhere in the combination of those prime factors lies a fair value for each and every item. It seems easy enough, but doing those computations yourself across years of value fluctuation can be excruciating and downright exhausting for a person who just wants to buy or sell a few comics. This is why FMV is so important to me. This is why this topic is so important to me is because I think it is the cornerstone of a healthy comic book market it is a place where everyone could go and easily sort through the noise and find out what should I be paying for this book in at any given point in time. Because if you want to go buy an Amazing Spider-Man 300 and you're new, brand new to collecting, and you type in Amazing Spider-Man 300 on eBay, you will be instantly overwhelmed, confused, and possibly swindled if you do pull the trigger and buy something not knowing what a fair market value is, which is why grading companies are so important and why uh, tracking sales of graded comics is so important is because now you could go to Go Collect and type in Amazing Spider-Man 300 and get a very, very solid with a very small window of deviation a price that you should pay because the next thing is like let's say you do go ahead and figure out what the fair market value of a of a comic book at a given point in time is it's not like you can always just go find that book at that price and this is the same thing across you know all kinds of different categories like if you were to you know try to buy a new vehicle and you find out you know from Kelly Blue Book what the fair price is it doesn't mean you can just walk into any dealership and find it at that fair price or likewise with like 
luxury watches or whatever the case may be, it's, it's very difficult to actually find books listed at a fair market value. But at least you have that starting point to where you know what a good price is. So let's say you really do want that Amazing Spider-Man 300. And just as an example, it's 500 bucks is the fair market value. But you see one for 550, you might be like, you know what, that's close enough, I'll do that. So that's why it's so important is it's helpful for new people getting into the hobby. It, it just keeps it a, a level uh, playing field and uh, I think it makes comics more accessible. That's why I think it's so important and I'll put a link in the description of this video to this article if you want to read the whole thing. I think it has some really interesting uh, background and stuff that I think is definitely worth reading. Specifically stuff like this it says, see Go Collect was founded as a private tool for the purposes of evaluating and obtaining almost exclusively Golden Age comic books. So it was a private tool. That That's how it started. That's the simple origin of go collect i highly recommend you go and read this article um and then i do want to just you know say thank you to go collect for this acknowledgement here down at the bottom it says go collect would like to extend our personal thanks to brian gordon at bryce comics for collaborating with us by examining our progress and offering specific points of focus along the way our community is a better place overall with your cutthroat commitment to fairness and honesty and thank you to all of our subscribers and followers for your continued feedback and support again this is a hundred percent organic i am not sponsored by go collect and i never want to be because i want to to be able to be objective and honest and and so this is just completely organic and so when i read this and saw that you know my colleagues in in this career field that i have chosen you know referred to me as uh, someone with cutthroat commitment to fairness and honesty i was just honored you know it's just like it, it feels really cool and so thank you to go collect for that and it is important to me because my reputation in this community in this industry is more important to me than the money because the money comes and goes but you know uh, having uh values and a reputation is something that you know is very difficult to build and i would never want to tear that down and another reason that it's so important to me is that i've met so many of you, the, the people watching this video or people that I buy and sell comics from on a daily basis and you guys are good people and some really awesome, amazing people in this community. And so that's why it's so important to me to get these values right because that's also one of the cornerstones of this hobby is the price of comics. And so I just really feel an obligation, you know, to always have honesty, transparency, and good prices on comic books. So also, don't forget to get in on the 20,000 subscriber giveaway. We are right around the corner from that. We'll draw the winner for these six CGC slabs. All you have to do is subscribe to the channel, comment on this video, and leave a like, and you're entered to win six slabs. So with that said, let's dive in to the numbers here. So these are actually all books that I have recently purchased and I broke it down by modern bronze and silver and we're just going to go in and see what the end takeaway is from the two value systems. So for all these books here my fair market value that I put was 43,960 and we'll get into some details here in just a sec and go collects was 46,790 which was a difference of $2,840 or 6%. So they were 6% higher and that's exactly what I was looking for with a pricing tool is something around 5% deviation. And here we are at 6%. I am thrilled with this number and in fact when we dive in a little deeper we'll see that like if we took this one out or in particular it would be way less than 6% would be almost spot on. So I'm I'm thrilled to to see and dive into these and see that it's really good. It's really good now. Like I can actually say like go collect especially if you have your entire collection cataloged there if you were to have hundreds of slabs you know you can be way more confident with that total number that it's spitting out for your graded comic books which is huge huge this is exactly what i was wanting is close that gap and everybody is better off because of it but let's talk a little bit about the details so this one i was five dollars higher this one i was ten dollars higher it seemed like the modern they were a little bit low on some of their modern ones but then there's ones like this one where they were way higher than me. One of the things that I love about it is the searchability. I mean, you just type in Amazing 692 and it brings up all the variants. And this is the one that we're looking at for this particular one, the 1970s variant. So I have it listed on my website for $200 with the code COLLECT10. You can always use code COLLECT10 for books under $1,000 and get 10% off. That means you would get it for 180. 
um, which I think the FMV is 200. So you can actually buy it right now on my website for 180. So I think that's um, a great price. It hasn't sold yet, which is interesting. Um, maybe I do need to drop it to 190 with the 10% off. You can come down here and you can click on the actual variant and it shows you a bunch of sales. So the most recent sale, and there's only been one sale this year, was 206. So I think the most recent sale being 206, I have it offered for 180, you know, that's a fair price. Uh, this one was a best offer, which they don't include in the total valuations. And then back in 2023, there was one sale for 160. Back in 2022, there was a few sales between 100 and 280. You know, this is a book that just doesn't come up all the time. It's this 1970s variant. And I did get a whole bunch of different variants for this issue. The 1990s variant, which already sold, and the 1980s was for 150. So 1980s, I had it at 150. They have it at 120. 1990s, I had it at 70. They had it at 65. And then this one was a little bit higher. So, all right. So let's look at this next one. Amazing Spider-Man number seven, the Cho variant. So I just typed in Amazing 7 Cho and look at that. It popped up. This is huge. This searchability. If you are ever going to catalog your collection, finding out which variant this is, uh, for Amazing Spider-Man number seven, I mean, there's like dozens of Amazing Spider-Man number seven. So to be able to just type in Amazing Seven Cho and boom, there it is. It pops up. Huge, the searchability. I mean, you can drive yourself crazy finding the right variant for some of these modern books. Uh, so they put the FMV as 110. I put the FMV at 70. And so that one was quite a bit off. So the last sale was 70. There was a sale before that for 50. Uh, and then there was a sale for 200. And I think that 200 is what's skewing their number. If you just, and that's what I do when doing an FMV like this is if there's a big outlier like this, I just throw it out. And so I think I would like to see that updated in their algorithm. If the, you know, if one of the sales is more than a hundred percent over the last six sales, like just throw that one out. And then um, because that was just obviously an anomaly. So for the Del Auto 800, I had it for 80, they had it for 85. Um, and again, I love the searchability on this. And this one is really interesting. Avengers Twilight by Peach Momoko. There's actually no recorded sales anywhere for the trade dress version. So this is the sketch version and this is the virgin edition, but there is no sales for the trade dress and so because of that they don't provide a, an fmv or for this one in particular so it's not even on here for the trade dress because there hasn't been any sales but the virgin you'll see that they don't provide an fmv and i believe that is because there isn't enough sales to say what's a fair price for this and i love that i think that that was a fix in this uh, algorithm launch is that if they don't have consistent data to present a fair market value, then they just don't put one because you're basically taking a shot in the dark if there's not enough sales. So I love that feature that it just actually doesn't show a fair market value if there's not enough data. Merc with a mouth. This was an interesting one. I put the FMV at 150. They put it at 90. Okay. And this is one that it, the last sale, it, this was for a 9.2. The last sale was a, like 190 and I put it for 150, it sold instantly. So this was an interesting one because this is such a hot book. This is the first appearance of Lady Deadpool. So the last sale was 190, I put it for 150, it sold instantly, they put it for 90. And I was just curious about this, like how do they manage hot books? And in this instance, I think 90 was, if you take the FOMO and the hype out of it, that's probably where this book is going to come back down to after the movie or eventually. So very interesting. I don't, I mean, obviously they're not taking into account hype. They're just looking at data. Um, but this is just one of those things that when a book's hot, it's hot. It's just going to move. All right. So let's look at the Bronze Age. Uh, Star Wars number one in a 9.8. I put it at 3,100. They had it at 3,900. So I think they were high on this one. Hulk 181. I had it at 6,000. They had it at 7,000. So so I definitely want to look this one up. This is a book also with, you know, a ton of hype around it right now. We were looking at the 9.0 grade and I listed it for 6,000 and it sold instantly on my website. Somebody bought it for cash, $6,000. And you know, 
I might have been a little bit low. I mean, the most recent sale was 7,500, but the sale before that was 5,300, and the sale before that was 6,000. And so if you look at like these recent sales here in 2024, there's more under 7,000 than over 7,000. So like you're more likely to find one for under 7,000 than over 7,000. And they had it valued at seven, I had it valued at six. I see. I could see an argument for both. I could see an argument for six thousand because there was those several sales for under six thousand, and I could see an argument for seven because the most recent sale was seventy five hundred. And this is, you know, the craziest time for this book. We have all this hype because of the movie that's coming out, and so this is a good example of how, you know, we're talking about something that is subjective and. I personally just, I get freaked out with this book. When you go over here, whenever I have it in stock, I mean, $6,000, you go and look at the population. There's 14,441 total copies on the census. I mean, there are so many of this book. And there's, you know, 1,800 graded higher than a 9.0. And all of this hype in the movie, and the hype is definitely going to eventually wear off. Uh, so that might have been why I listed it at you know a price that it was a great price. So Hero for Hire, I had it for fifteen fifty. They had it for seventeen, so they were higher on this one as well. So they were higher, higher, higher. It looks like for the Bronze Age, they were they were for the most part higher than I was, except for a few examples like this one. Um, this one they they were low. Like if you go and look at Amazing Spider Man one twenty nine and the nine two. Uh, you, you would be very hard pressed to find one for twenty nine hundred bucks, and mine actually sold right away for thirty two fifty. This is a good example of why there's that allowable percentage, like six percent. I think is a very healthy number to allow up or down because, like this one, I was higher and it sold. This one, I am lower than them and it didn't sell. So that it just goes to show that there is that little bit of leeway. So this one, for example, Giant Size X Men number one. They have the fair market value at 5000 I have it listed for 4500 and it has not sold. It's only been, you know, less than 24 hours. But this is one that also has a lot of fluctuation. You know, there's so many sales of this because it's also a book that just has so many copies that, you know, there is there is a lot of fluctuation with this. So let's look at the Silver Age here. Uh, they were higher on this one. They were lower on this one, but this one already sold. So another example of one where it's like, 300 was a great price. But then again, you know, I do offer the 10% off, so that brought it down to 270. Avengers 1, we're basically spot on. Avengers 4, we were very close. 57, close. This one, exactly the same. This one, exactly the same for Daredevil 1. FF 50, they were lower. Hulk 4, they were a little lower. Iron Man 2, they were significantly higher. Silver Surfer 4, they were higher. And the end result, once again, is a difference of 6%. So they overall, they were 6% higher than me. And, and, you know, I do price things aggressively. And this is a good mix of books. There's a lot of books in here that, you know, I don't offer the 10% off on for the Grail books. There's also a lot of books in here that were, you know, with the 10% off. So I think this is a, a decent a uh, mix of books and uh, a good representation of the new algorithm for Go Collect. So my end takeaways for this new FMV algorithm on Go Collect is number one for the collector, it's a massive win, massive win. I highly recommend Go Collect now. I and again, this is all organic. I'm not associated with them in any way. But if you are looking for a pricing tool where you can catalog your collection and get a good idea of what it's worth, this is a great tool for that. I can actually say that now because it was within 6%. You know, there's still nuance. And that's the other big takeaway for this is that I'm never going to be able to just take a look at, you know, a collection that's logged in something and just make an offer based on that. I'm still going to have to dig a little deeper because there's, there's nuance for all kinds of different things, but it is a great starting point. And that is exactly what the community needs in a pricing tool is they need a, a realistic starting point to know what a book is worth at a given point in time. And it 
breaks down barriers of others entering the hobby. Um, it's just a massive win. And so I'm so glad that this happened. I'm, I'm hoping that cover price uh, will implement some changes as well, because cover price is the other major pricing tool that still is, you know, significantly off on their fair market value calculator. And I, I've been told that they're working on it. And as soon as they get theirs updated and I check it out, if it's as good as GoCollect, we'll make a similar video to this. Everybody's going to win if, if everybody's just on the same page with fair market values. Don't forget to check BriceComics.com while you're there. Sign up for the newsletter and you're entered to win a Hulk 349.0 newsstand this month. And we have massive new collections coming in. In addition to the Wilbur collection, I've bought all kinds of stuff. So we're going to have a very, very nice variety of inventory over at BriceComics.com. Use code COLLECT10 for 10% off. And please go bookmark those whatnot shows if you want. I'd love to see you come hang out. Even if you don't buy anything, we have a ton of fun in these live shows and I would love to see you there. Thanks as always for sticking with me to the end of the video. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.